From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. The 1923 series recently won a big award, and Butte was the main reason. I'm Joe St. George in Washington. So what are the true toss-up swing states that will decide the 2024 presidential election? For the moment, it looks like very few states will get that coveted status. We explain why next. I'm Megan Thompson, and coming right up, I'm going to take you on a home visit with a kindergarten teacher and her new student. You are going to love that story. I can't wait that to see it. It is so sweet. Okay, good morning, Southwest Montana. It is 6.33 on this Thursday edition of Montana This Morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Elwell with you. A nice look over the mining city, but I got to say I'm noticing later and later in the morning that yeah, sun is coming that's, up. Uh, our days are beginning to shrink mm -hmm. unofficial into summer here this weekend. Uh, so much to go over. Yeah, last day um, of August. Got to get you prepared. Yep. Temperatures this morning, not bad. Uh, generally into the 50s, a couple of 40s, but uh, comfortable conditions this morning. Uh, most of our showers are moving out and that allows us to see the um, daytime temperatures kind of build. Uh, some cloud cover in the area, beautiful conditions for the afternoon, mid 70s, uh, close to outdoorable conditions for us, <laughs> uh, but uh, just a little cool and a little breezy for parts of the area for me to put that uh, A plus on the grade card. We'll talk about that weekend forecast does include some rain showers and cooler temperatures by the end of the weekend. That's coming up in just a few minutes. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. Now, right off the top, we're going to be talking about Yellowstone National Park. The National Park Service says visitors to Yellowstone contributed $600 million to the economy of the communities around the park back in 2022. Yellowstone recorded 3.3 million visits in 2022 in spite of being closed for eight days due to severe flooding in early June. The Park Service calls the park an essential economic driver, bringing jobs and revenue to local communities. Now, nationwide, the Park Service says almost 38% of the spending generated by parks is for hotel stays. Slightly more than 19% is at local restaurants, and about 11% is for gas. Now, of the 6,234 local jobs created due to the park's activity, most nearly 41% are considered secondary effects in businesses that sell goods or services to tourism businesses. More than 21% of jobs are in the hotel industry, while more than 16% of jobs are at restaurants. And the MSU landscape design students are working with homeowners to help integrate wildfire resilience and drought tolerance as climate variables increasingly threaten the American West. The project was sparked in part by the Bridger Foothills fire that in 2020 burned around 8,000 acres along the south end of the Bridger Mountains. Several residential neighborhoods were less than two miles from the wildfire. An ember can travel up to four miles ahead of an active wildfire front, meaning those neighborhoods were well within range. The students are working with a pair of Bozeman homeowners to integrate fire resilience and drought tolerance into new landscape design suggestions. And for this next story, we're going to be talking about getting good recognition. MTN's John Amy tells us how a show filmed in Butte recently won a major award. Hey, when you live in a town that's pretty much the set of a period movie, you're going to get recognized. And that's why the 1923 television series, which was filmed right here in Butte, was recently honored for having the best location for an historic drama. It's kind of overwhelming. Like you, you, like I said, we, we all kind of knew we had a good crew, but it's really nice to have uh, the locations community say, you guys did a great job. You know, that's, uh, that's a good feather in your cap. The Location Managers Guild International presented 1923 with the Outstanding Locations in a Period Television Series Award. Zach Hine was the location manager for the production and accepted the award in a recent ceremony in Santa Monica, California. He said Butte was the perfect location for the show. We scouted all, you know, all over Montana and I don't know how we would have really done it without the, uh, you know, the, the way Butte's been preserved and the way it looks. The production team also credited a great crew, as well as cooperation from local business and property owners who were so accommodating during last year's filming. 
it was a, a combination of all of that, a group of top-notch people and a community willing to work with us. Butte's Chamber of Commerce held a small ceremony to congratulate the location's crew for the award. Officials say 1923 brought positive attention to Butte. It, it was fun to do and, and uh, it, it's fun to look at, at uh, a TV show and say hey that was filmed in our community and, and it's just, I, I just, as I said, I think it, it adds to Butte's mystique. In Butte, John Amy. MTN News. Incredible recognition. Thank you very much, John, for sharing that with us. Now on the national scene this morning, one week after the first Republican presidential debate and one week after former President Trump's Georgia mugshot was released, not much has changed in the race for president. Real clear politics, which averages all the major polls, still has former president up by around 40 points nationally in the race for the Republican nomination. But as our Joe St. George explains, when the general election comes, more into focus, something unique in 2024 appears to be happening. A historically low number of actual swing states. With election coverage, we can buy fancy touchscreens and build amazing graphics. But at the end of the day, elections are about coloring in a map. Some states have been colored red for years, others blue for decades. But in every election, there are toss-up states colored purple or yellow to signal that they can go any party's way. But something seems to be happening in our country's politics. Fewer states being classified by experts as being true toss-ups. In fact, 2024 may have the fewest toss-up states in recent political history. A lot of this is pretty set in stone. Amy Walter has been attempting to predict elections for more than 25 years. She runs the nonpartisan Cook Political Report, which analyzes races from coast to coast. Recently, she had an observation. In 1995, the Cook Political Report listed 12 states as toss-ups. Even California was included. Nearly 30 years later, that same report is for now only listing these four states as true toss-ups going into 2024. Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. If you go back in the entirety of, of, of pretty much the, the 20th century, we've never had a map as a determinative as this electoral map is today. Take, for instance, Florida. For years, many analysts would start coloring it yellow without a second thought. This presidential election, it begins as a soft shade of red after voting for Republicans for president and for governor for multiple election cycles. The same is true for Ohio. Democrats, meanwhile, in recent years have gained ground in states like Virginia, Michigan, and Colorado. Those states begin the 2024 campaign colored a light shade of blue. We have become a much more polarized country where people have put on their red and blue jerseys um, and they don't take them off. If you live in a swing state, this all means that the number of commercials, door knocks and phone calls will be greater than they have been in recent elections. And if don't expect as many presidential visits, of course, Democrats and Republicans will attempt to prove D.C. analysts wrong and create more toss up states between now and this time next year, especially in places where there are more competitive congressional races. The campaigns are, are spending their money in fewer places. Joe St. George, Scripps News, Washington. Now back a little closer to home, it's unusual for a teacher to visit you at home on the first day of school, but for about 60 new kindergarten students in Butte, that is exactly what happened this week. MTN's Megan Thompson takes us to a home visit with a Butte teacher. Well, it's the first day of school here in Butte, and as many kids head off to school and sit down in front of their new teachers, some of Butte's youngest kids are getting visits from their teachers right at home with the Kindergarten Home Visit Program. Hi, Dad. How are you? I'm so happy to see you. We are just strictly here to, um, you know, ask the families what they're hoping for for the school year and um, just get to know the kids a little bit and really for them to get to know us. <laughs> I do have a dog. Carrie is one of four kindergarten teachers with Butte Public Schools who are heading out to meet roughly 60 new pupils at their homes ahead of the first day of school. Do you have any questions about kindergarten? I don't know. We really try to um, offer this opportunity to all of our kids so that they're not feeling like they're being dropped off to strangers on that first day. 
And the visits are also helpful in building relationships with parents. You know, it's nice to create that relationship with parents ahead of time and so that they feel like if they have questions or concerns or um, anything that might come up during the school year that they're more likely to reach out about it. After a short interview with her teacher, six-year-old Sarah Richardson says she's excited to learn how to read and go to recess and meet new friends, but most of all she's looking forward to wearing her new outfit next week. Um, I'm thinking I have a pink headband that I think I'm gonna wear in a pink dress and sparkle boots. That would be perfect. <laughs> oh, that is great. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. I just love that story. Thank you very much, Megan. Now, we're going to take a short break here on Montana this morning, but when we come back, we have a look at your forecast, your top stories, and we're